Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So uh, next we will see what are the different types of combustors that are uh, that are being used or have been used in uh, gas turbine engines. So this is about the types of combustors that we encounter. Okay. So there are uh, essentially uh, three types of combustor. First is this can type combustor, where we will see the combustor essentially looks like a can, and um, uh, and these are these cans are essentially circumferentially arranged around the central shaft okay of course you see that the uh, if you look into the basic architecture of the gas turbine engine okay so this is the the, the uh, cut section so the you see the combustor has to occupy this annular space which is surrounding the central shaft so the overall architecture of the combustor has to be in an annular form okay now this uh, this essentially this uh, this we are here we are just showing this uh, three uh, uh, here we are just showing only three uh, uh, these uh, cans, but actually it looks something like this. Okay, uh, that uh, this is arranged in this form of beads um, around the central shaft, and uh, this is how the the can uh, can type combustor looks like. So these are the central injectors that are being shown. But um, here each of the uh, combustors are essentially separate. The central part contains the shaft. Okay, so uh, this this combustor is arranged in this manner. In the can annular manner, so it's similar similar to the can combustor, but there is also this um, this shroud uh, surrounding this can. And there is some airflow that can uh, happen across this uh, different uh, can annular combustors. In the annular combustor, you see that uh, there is this, this injectors are just placed in this annular space, and there is absolute interaction between all the combustors, all the all the essentially individual burners, which are where the flame is essentially stabilized like this, mm, uh, and uh, there there is nothing that separates or uh, physically separates this flame from each other, and the flame and flow can interact. And uh, what is the most modern engines essentially use this type of combustor, whereas this is the most primitive type of uh, combustors. Uh, this is the most uh, this these combustors are used in, in the most uh, uh, primitive engines or the first engines uh, which was set, set up by the Frank Wheatle etc. But modern engines like the, the Rolls Royce engines, uh, GE engines uh, are all uh, uh, essentially use this annular type combustors. So, what is uh, the can combustor? Uh, this is an example of a, of a can combustor. So, you see that all these combustors are essentially um, mm, essentially uh, put into uh, different cans and uh, this combustor has a cylindrical liner inside this, uh, uh, this has a cylindrical liner inside the cylindrical casing. This was the first kind of combustor. Okay. Now, the advantage is that uh, this was uh, very easy to develop because you just need to develop one can combustor and then you can replicate that combustors and arrange them in a, in a, in a circumferential manner. So, uh, and it is easy for maintenance also you can just take out one combustor and then repair whatever has been done and um, so that is how this thing is, uh, is uh, can be done. But of course, as you see that the metal that goes into the individual cans okay, that adds excessive weight and size that may, makes it unsuitable for aero applications. In aero in, in anything related to aerospace uh, applications uh, weight is a very important factor. So, you want to have minimal weight um, for the engine. Okay. Now, uh, the second time uh, thing is the can annular combustor. So, uh, the here you see that uh, this uh, the, uh, in, in addition there is this outer casing which is uh, provided and also this in this uh, these are provided in this annular space and um, this this can combustor essentially is sitting in the annular space and then there is this uh, flame tube where essentially the flame can, uh, can pass from one com combustor to the other combustor and you can have only essentially one igniter. The idea is that you can have one igniter and then the flame can uh, basically interact from one combustor to the other combustor. Mm, so, ignition uh, if it is ignited a kernel that is ignited in one combustor can develop into a full flame and then that full flame can uh, proper uh, can uh, send out the hot gases to these flame tubes mm, and those can ignite the other uh, neighboring combustors and so on and so forth the whole uh, 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 all the combustor in the engine gets ignited. Okay. So, this was also a little bit uh, uh, used in old engines uh, uh, and then once again the chamber design is not difficult and um, working pressure can be higher than the uh, can combustor because here you have two layers of protection. Okay. 
The main disadvantages are that this crossfire tubes are very difficult to not only really difficult to develop and achieving a reliable and air sustainable flow pattern is also very difficult to achieve. Okay, so that is uh, that is a very difficult uh, thing um, uh, that to ensure this uh, flow through these narrow tubes into and uh, in and out of these different combustors are, are not uh, are not very uh, simple to achieve and that um, uh, led to this uh, abandoning of this kind of uh, designs. So the most modern engines use this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, annular combustor. This is this Rolls Royce uh, engine. Uh, this is what you see here, and um, uh, Rolls Royce combustor that you see here. So the annular liner is here. Uh, the thing is that individually these are these are the, these are the injectors. So the combustor is essentially occupying this this space. Okay, so this is the space of the um, of the of the of the combustor, and then this essentially has a goes a full uh, uh, along this uh, uh, this uh, occupies this full annulus uh, uh, between the the compressor uh, blades and this turbine blades. So the compressor blades are here, and the turbine blades are here. So in between uh, this annulus and this this is a uh, this is the sh hole for the shaft. So the shaft will be something like this. Okay, so uh, in uh, between these, uh, this uh, combustors occupies this uh, space, and um, uh, and it's a full annulus design, and where individual injectors are not physically separated. Okay, and there is absolutely uh, no nothing that separates them, and um, uh, it's just an annular liner is placed uh, uh, concentrically inside the annular casing. So this is the uh, popular combustor that is uh, present in most ultra modern uh, engines, mm, and the advantage is that the clean aerodynamic design makes it more compact. Okay, so because there is no separation as such, and there is no uh, walls intermediate, then this this as there is it can this combustor can allow uh, um, uh, can have much less um, uh, can uh, occupy much less space, and it also has much less weight because it uh, has totally done away with the cans. Okay, now uh, also the pressure loss is also very small because um, uh, you don't have much interaction with this kind of uh, uh, of these walls. Mm, uh, and uh, we can aerodynamically more importantly we can uh, design this uh, this flow path in a much uh, better way okay the disadvantage is that that because there is less metal of course there is uh, less material to take um, uh, the buckling load so the buckling this outer liner takes a huge amount of a buckling load and uh, this uh, high cost of uh, air supply air required for testing so it's very difficult to i mean um, though people do that's uh, like this uh, combustors has to develop uh, you know systematically from one injector to the multiple injectors to the full annular testing. So, uh, development is more difficult and more challenging than a uh, of course, a single can type combustor. Okay, so uh, this is how this. So we'll talk about more about this annular combustor. So this is a section view of a of a CF um, six uh, uh, fifty annular combustor uh, from uh, General Electric. So as you see that um, that this is of course uh, much more uh, uh, complicated design than the this uh, uh, this diffuser uh, combustor uh, nozzle that we had uh, shown you um, previously. So of course here you see that uh, what we have is here is of the diffuser where the uh, flow comes in from from the uh, compressor okay so the flow is uh, flow entering uh, flow from uh, flow from compressor enters into this uh, into this and then it uh, passes to this uh, diffuser where as you see the the cross section area increases okay uh, so this is bigger and then the flows essentially slows down through this as it passes through this uh, thing and of course you should uh, the here the f area is not exaggerated but you see it's a full annulus so the actual area increase is actually quite large than what is seen in this uh, what can be understood from this uh, um, this uh, uh, this picture um, this um, so the air comes in here and now it can essentially as you see that here you have the e injector okay so but before that the air essentially can get uh, um, split into these two parts so it can come through here and it can also so this uh, this is the only the central section so there is ample space for the air to essentially enter into this uh, um, region also and then it essentially enters into this uh, uh, essentially uh, recirculates and enters into this uh, thing and uh, passes through this uh, solars uh, on which the injector this uh, atom injector is mounted so this injector essentially sends out a, a liquid sheet like this which essentially breaks up and um, okay uh, it's it's not so big let's uh, draw it little more accurately 
So, this uh, b b this injector uh, sends out a liquid uh, sheet and uh, of course, in a, in, a, in a swirling environment. So, this whole flow is, uh, is, uh, is swirling like this okay. and uh, then, um, then the, as it evaporates, so a flame will be, um, uh, will be, will be formed. Okay, um, a flame like this can be can be formed um, as the as the uh, as the um, uh, as the as the droplets uh, the liquid droplets that is injected from here. So if I draw this this fuel path through this, it comes in. It comes in here. It comes in here. and then it goes in and this forms the spray okay but these solars these are the solars which essentially solves the flow okay and the, the flow is essentially uh, solves and at the same time it also creates uh, uh, as the sol numbers are selected uh, you will see that the sol number here is essentially the ratio of the the mm, uh, the, uh, the actual flux of the tangential momentum to the actual flux of actual momentum so uh, it's uh, it essentially creates uh, provides a tan tangential momentum uh, or a rotational motion to the otherwise straight uh, flow this solars and then these uh, when that they exceed a certain number the, when this tangential momentum is high enough the tangential momentum that has been imparted onto the flow is high enough then there is a phenomenon called vortex breakdown when there is a flow recirculates so you see this uh, kind of flow recirculation and then that helps in essentially stabilizing the flame okay so uh, here you see uh, uh, this uh, this flame being uh, being being stabilized like this and uh, then there is also this um, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, air which is coming from here so this this air is at a very high, this this flame is at a very high temperature um, which we don't want as you are, as you remember which we don't want this kind of a high temperature air so then this uh, air comes in later through this cooling holes and it reduces uh, the the temperature from here uh, essentially t uh, reduces uh, so that at this exit your uh, temperature is the turbine uh, entry temperature Okay, so this uh, these are the different parts: the diffuser, then you have this uh, uh, the the injector, the igniter. This is the casing, and this is the liner. So the liner is essentially the boundary between the the combust this this uh, main primary combustor combustion region to the um, uh, to the outside uh, casing uh, of the of the combustor. Mm, and then uh, this is the inner liner which is the central part and uh, uh, of course this is a full uh, you have to see that the, uh, the the axis of symmetry will be somewhere here so it's essentially a full uh, circumference uh, it has it is like this okay so uh, that is that what one needs to understand so it is just a small uh, cut section of this annular um, combustor that we are showing here we'll talk a little bit about uh, this in in in, in the coming uh, slides so, as you see that uh, one of the important parts, so this is the diffuser. So, uh, the, even though this is a combustion class, we will just, just because it is an important part of the combustor, we will just tell you what the diffuser does. As you have seen that the diffusers are used to reduce um, the compressor outlet velocity and recover the dynamic pressure. Okay. So, the main purpose is to reduce the outlet velocity. So, uh, 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 so that the pressure loss is less and also in doing that it recovers some of the dynamic pressure and uh, the combustor pressure loss uh, can be thought about as uh, 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 that is the 3 is the combustor entry point and 4 is the combustor exit and the turbine end entry point. So, it can be thought of as having two parts the loss emerges from two parts number one is the cold uh, loss and the hot loss. The cold loss is that because you have to you are pushing in the air um, it uh, to push in the air you need to have some kind of a pressure drop okay. Uh, because there are viscous uh, losses on the walls. So, uh, to maintain the constant velocity uh, it is like a pipe flow that if you want to maintain a constant velocity profile uh, in a fully developed pipe flow you need to have a constant pressure gradient okay. Mm, so, that the viscous losses can be so that the fluid can overcome the viscous losses in the walls. So, um, so that for that uh, there is a cold loss all inevitable cold loss and then there is a hot loss and uh, this cold losses uh, corresponds to the diffuser and the liner pressure drop. Now, in the liner pressure when there that this drop essentially also when there is a uh, this because of the tortuous path it follows to the liner because of the essential cooling holes etcetera. Mm, it, uh, 
actually creates some turbulence which helps in mixing. So, this loss is a uh, cold loss is not so bad, but in the diffuser of course, uh, diffuser also because of the walls it has some losses. So, now um, the P hot uh, is that when you add the heat into a flowing gas which is if it is a subsonic gas then of course, then there is a pressure loss um, as we have seen, but uh, and this pressure loss is directly proportional to the U square uh, which we have done this if you remember in the governing equations and the premixed uh, 1D premixed flame class. Okay, so, um, this uh, is about 0.5 times rho u square times T4 by T3 uh, minus 1. So, with this we can calculate the pressure loss and uh, uh, to basically reduce this pressure loss we wanted to have a low u. Uh, so, the diffuser actually is used for that purpose. So, uh, and uh, also it ensures that the liner gets smooth and stable flow. So, the diffuser has uh, multiple purposes in that it not only recovers, uh, it on not only minimizes the pressure loss, but it also ensures that the, that the flow uh, which is which can be strongly turbulent coming out of the compressor that is um, that is uh, that passes into a, a very aerodynamic manner into the um, combustor. And there are two kinds of diffusers essentially then one is a fair diffuser or an aer aerodynamic diffuser which essentially divides. Uh, this is the aerodynamic diffuser which uh, divides the flow towards the annular and the annular zone and the combustion dome. So, the annular zone is essentially this. So, you see the diffuser essentially guides the flow into the combustor. So, but the com flow can go either in this manner or it can go into the into the into the main combust into the main dome combustion dome region. So, how this uh, how this will happen how much how much flow will go into the center into the combustion dome region and how much combust combustor will go into the uh, into the into the outside uh, cooling region is completely governed by the diffuser. So, this is a diffuser is a very very this designing the diffuser is a very very important task because see if you have more air going into this uh, outside region and very less air going into this. So, then you will produce uh, you will have very fuel rich combustion and that will produce all sorts of pollutants ok. Uh, so, the, you do not want that on the other hand if there is too much air going into the into this um, central region and uh, uh, very little air going into the cooling region then your cooling will not be effective and the temperature profile will be bad and also you do not um, uh, your, your combustion may be outside the stability margins. So, this diffuser there is no way to essentially tell the flow that you go this path you go this path. So, all you can do is to guide the you design the diffuser in a manner. So, that this flow gets uh, divided into the proportion that the combustion designer wants ok. So, the equivalence ratio that will be here. Uh, will be essentially governed by how the diffuser is uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, segregating the flow into the main dome region as well as in the outside region. So, this is that is why the diffuser uh, plays a very important uh, role. Mm, and uh, you see that uh, there are two diffusers this aerodynamic diffuser and dump diffuser and the dump diffuser lets the flow distill divide itself into the uh, annular and the dome region. So, this uh, dump diffuser essentially creates a certain expansion into this as you see here and um, uh, of course, here you see in the dump diffuser your velocity reduction will be much more than in the aerodynamic diffuser. So, depending on the situation we you one can use a dump diffuser or an aerodynamic diffuser ok. So, there both variants are actually seen in the modern um, engines uh, ok. So, next let us go into the combustion chamber itself ok. So, uh, the combustion chamber as you have seen that um, uh, this is a schematic uh, which is essentially the, the schematic of this part ok. So, uh, so the combustion chamber essentially uh, you see the flow coming from the diffuser here comes into uh, which gets divided into the outside uh, this cooling flow and the main flow that goes into the dome. Okay, so, you see that here at the center you have the fuel nozzle for, uh, the fuel will be coming from here and gets injected ok. So, um, uh, let us uh, so, the fuel will be will be coming uh, and getting injected from here and it will form this spray um, uh, and uh, then uh, the, uh, the, the, the air uh, which is uh, coming from here ok will uh, pass to the solars and it will develop this swirling flow and it will recirculate ok it will recirculate here and then as this uh, recirculates and me meets this um, uh, this spray it will essentially uh, form a, uh, it will mix and then once you have the igniter it will create the flame. So, the primary zone here you have the uh, most of the flame inside this uh, inside this uh, primary zone ok uh, like this and um, uh, this this uh, is the most important region of the combustor because this houses your uh, essentially converts all the chemical energy to 
to this uh, to the to the um, uh, to the um, uh, to the thermal energy uh, by the process of combustion which we have learned so far and uh, it is a very complex process that happens here. So, you have got uh, essentially um, you, know, you have essentially the processes if you if you just sit uh, if you just um, uh, summarize you have got um, um, uh, you have just got an uh, you the liquid has to atomize atomization okay then you have uh, that atomization means the breakup of the liquid sheet into small and small droplets okay uh, well, there can be primary atomization secondary atomization and so on and then this must fuel uh, these small droplets uh, so, uh, big droplets goes into small droplets. Mm, so, then these small droplets must evaporate. Okay. So, um, you know, this evaporate uh, to form this uh, mix uh, to form this um, uh, and then it must mix um, uh, mix. Uh, the, so, the it must mix with uh, mix uh, fuel air mixing. Okay. Uh, so, you have got to have fuel air mixing and then you have to have uh, this uh, the, then you can have uh, the combustion okay and depending on the fuel or mixing you can have uh, some places you can have most non premix combustion you can have premix combustion as you see that in the modern engines people are going trying to go have a pilot non premix flame and uh, and a premixed uh, main flame so you can have both but of course these are all happens in a very strongly uh, turbulent flow okay so uh, and uh, individually so the, the flame will not be not a not a smooth and a nice uh, flame like this so the flame will be strongly wrinkled and uh, and uh, and a strongly turbulent flame when you look at it instantaneously okay so uh, individually you can look into this flame and you can find all the things that we have studied uh, all the things are essentially present it involves kinetics it involves oxidation mechanisms it involves you need to know this this whole process of this fuel air mixing and how it happens is governed to the governing equations and then you have to have uh, then individually if it is a non premix flame then locally you can use this uh, this flamelet approximation that you have seen uh, which involves uh, this uh, the solution from the chambered flame and then if it is a premix flame uh, one premix if it is a uh, turbulent premix flame uh, some place you can use this analysis of the of the uh, one premix flame that you have seen and apply uh, the stretch concepts to derive a more generalized uh, function of uh, flame speed and you can use if it is a premix flame you can use the g equation to basically find out how it will evolve and uh, of course it involves limit phenomena also because that limit phenomena will govern you uh, how in what margins it will uh, it will it will it will um, be stabilized or it will be uh, uh, in where you can ignite it and where it can extinguish. So, all these things essentially feed into this small combustion uh, combustor of a gas turbine engine that you see. So, all the things you have learnt is very very relevant and feeds into this. So, if you want to simulate this process you need to know all these things. So, that is why this this course is we have we have we have designed this course in that manner. Okay. Now, uh, this uh, this is the primary zone and then we go um, and then you go into this uh, into this uh, this uh, into the secondary zone where you have secondary holes and you have some coolings like this uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, from this uh, cooling which reduces the temperature to some extent and then finally you have the dilution zone where you get feed in lot of air and then this dilution zone will essentially control the temperature profile that comes into this. So, we at the finally you need a temperature profile uh, in some manner which is governed by the uh, stress um, situation in the turbine. So, uh, this cooling hole once again uh, controls uh, the um, uh, will will control the this this uh, this temperature distribution and that will uh, uh, ensure long life of the of the turbine uh, turbine blades. So, this intermediate so the primary zone is where the main combustion takes place and the intermediate zone con uh, increases the combustion efficiency it reduces the pollutants pollution you will see how and this dilution zone essentially creates the required temperature profile for the turbine inlet. So, these are the different um, processes that must um, happen. So, as you see that uh, just to recap the primary zone essentially is used for anchoring the flame and to provide essentially the sufficient time for achieving the total combustion of the um, uh, incoming air fuel mixture. 
Okay, um, so uh, the primary zone um, is uh, is designed uh, so that is why you have solar so that the fuel air mixture have sufficient residence time. If it was just straight flow coming out of the diffuser, the diffuser flow can be of the order of 50, 60 meters per second. Okay, so if that uh, flow you cannot uh, stabilize a turbulent flame as is, so you need to some have some kind of a flame stabilizer. So the turbulent flow, so the primary zone essentially houses this injector and the solar. So the injector is essentially mounted on this uh, on this um, on this solars. And uh, it provides uh, this kind of a re recirculating uh, flow, as you see, the spinal flow essentially ensures that the uh, that the uh, that the flow has sufficient residence time in the primary zone, where you can have complete combustion of incoming fuel air mixture. So it creates a toroidal flow reversal that entrains and recirculates part of the hot combustion product. So that is the second thing it does. So once you have a flame stabilized here. Okay, once you have a flame stabilize this and then you have recirculation, so the so the fuel air mixture comes into here, then it recirculates and then it comes back again. So when this comes back again, it is in touch with the fresh mixtures and this uh, hot products essentially can serve as an ignition source. Uh, it can transfer uh, the, the th thermal energy by conduction convection processes into the fresh mixture and that can help in achieving um, uh, continuous ignition. And this uh, toroidal flow can be created with a proper solar baffle or a bluff body. But typically in uh, aero gas turbine engines, uh, uh, solars are used uh, whereas uh, bluff bodies are used in afterburners which we will take up in a later. Um, uh, so strong and stable primary zone air flow can provide wide stability limits, good ignition performance and reduce combustion noise and instability. So the design of the primary zone is of extreme importance okay and it is this, this part understanding this part and simulating this part is of extremely high importance and it is um, basically the most important uh, job of a uh, combustion um, uh, design uh, of a combustion engineer uh, in working in an aero gas turbine engine. So uh, here we will take up little bit about uh, swirling flows before because because um, as you see all gas turbine modern aero gas turbine engines use uh, flames in um, uh, use essentially flames in swirling flows. This, so this is how the swirling flame looks like uh, and this is how this is how and actually this is a laboratory experiment but this is how actually the, um, the flame inside um, uh, but annular combustor would look like though this is a very laboratory experiment and uh, this is uh, essentially the flame in a, in a strongly swirling flow. And uh, this, this, uh, so these are all essentially lab laboratory experiments, but these are essentially different uh, variations of the flames in swirling flows. Now, this is a simulation that you see here. It's a larger simulation of swirling flame, okay. And um, and this is a, this, as I said, is a multiple swirling flames arranged in annular combustor. So this chamber comprises of sixteen injectors and is equipped with a quartz cylindrical wall for doing optical diagnostics. So uh, we will talk about optical diagnostics in the later class when we will we'll look take up um, the flame stabilization and after burner. Uh, but this is how essentially the, 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 in, the, the back plane of a gas turbine combustor uh, look like. Okay, so um, uh, looks like and then the flow comes in as you see it passes through the solars and you see that this develops this, uh, this, uh, this uh, the, uh, it develops this, uh, this swirling um, pattern into this uh, thing. So as I said that the swirl number is an important parameter and it is characterized by the uh, by the essentially the uh, the axial flux of azimuthal momentum to the axial flux of axial momentum and it is governed by this uh, uh, generalized expression. Okay, so um, uh, so the thing is that uh, uh, as I said that uh, when the swirl number is about uh, in a in a, uh, in a swirl, swirl which does not have a center body uh, or a very small center body uh, when the flow is uh, fully developed and is fully swirling. So in those cases, uh, if the swirl number is greater than about 0.6, uh, then there is a uh, uh, then there is a phenomena called uh, 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 called a vortex breakdown. And uh, the reason is uh, can be it's a, it's, a, it's a complicated fluid mechanical phenomena. But if you write down the Navier-Stokes equation, it's essentially comes down to u theta square by um, uh, uh, r is uh, scales as dou p dou r. Okay, so when u theta square by r is large, then there is a then this uh, dou p dou r. Then there's a pressure gradient, inward pressure gradient that develops, and um, essentially it's a like a balance of centrifugal force with the acceleration. Mm, uh, and uh, so then this uh, dou p dou r essentially causes the flow to recirculate. Okay, so that causes the vortex breakdown. But this vortex breakdown phenomena is very important for uh, gas turbine engines because it en ensures stable combustion and this continuous steroid recirculation zone helps in continuous circulation of the products. Uh, so that is a very important thing for a gas turbine engine. 
So, what does the intermediate zone do? Uh, the intermediate zone which follows the primary zone is uh, at high temperatures the primary zone dissociation reactions are favored ok. So, which we have learned from the chemical equilibrium uh, class um, uh, that uh, that causes this uh, dissociation essentially causes the shifting of the temperature peak um, from the stoichiometric side uh, uh, to uh, uh, to the uh, slightly to the uh, uh, essentially to the uh, uh, rich side ok. So, uh, and that is due to dissociation. And the sudden quench in temperature at the dilution zone uh, makes all the reactions uh, uh, frozen actually. So, uh, because there is some cooling air coming in it immediately reduces the temperature. So, the reaction zone um, gets frozen. So, the exhaust uh, uh, gas contains uh, essentially high amount of uh, 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 CO and H2 and uh, uh, what uh, this uh, so uh, the intermediate zone essentially provides you enough air in the combustion chamber to decrease the temperature and burn the co and h2 okay so uh, uh, that is the thing that is uh, if this intermediate zone was directly followed by the by the by the by the dilution zone but the dilution zone puts in lot of fuel lot of air right so that uh, would have cooled this temperature to so, so that would have cooled the uh, the high temperature combustion products to so low temperature values that the uh, that the reaction will be uh, um, will be frozen and that at that point uh, like uh, if it was kind of a uh, situation of chemical equilibrium then uh, that, that that will contain a lot of CO and H2. So, you need to provide a little bit more air in the dilution in the intermediate zone. So, that you essentially can uh, burn up the, uh, the, the CO and H2 and if uh, unburned hydrocarbon or soot any and this can be used for um, to, uh, to, to, uh, to reduce the temperature slightly, but not as much. Um, so, that the temp so, that the situation is conducive for the combustion of the carbon monoxide hydrogen unburned hydrocarbons and soot okay, and oxidation of the soot. So, this is what the purpose of the dilution zone is it essentially acts as a pollution pollutant uh, controller ok. And uh, with increase in the pressure ratio around 1970 intermediate zones becomes extinct, but stricter emission rules are making it relevant in a combustor ok. So, this is the intermediate zones uh, role uh, to essentially reduce the carbon monoxide and hydrogen. And the dilution zone essentially as you see here that uh, 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 there is a lot of uh, dilution uh, uh, here is a breakup of the total uh, air inside the combustor ok. So, you see that um, about 80 percent of the air is going out and only uh, uh, the whole about only 12 percent of the air is actually used for direct uh, combustion in the primary zone. Whereas, this um, out of the 80 percent air that goes out 20 percent enters into the primary zone and then um, uh, the, there is a lot uh, that uh, slowly enters into the uh, into the into the dilution and the uh, there is a uh, there is about uh, the remaining uh, 60 percent of the air essentially comes into the dilution zone ok. So, this of course, this does not have a intermediate zone. So, you see a bulk of the air is actually used for dilution uh, th that is reducing the temperature of the combustion products to uh, acceptable levels for the turbine entry temperature. So, this is the purpose of the dilution zone that the exhaust that get out of the combustor at um, uh, combustor is given is, is given a specific temperature profile before it enters into the turbine ok. So, this profile is known as the pattern factor and the dilution zone is made to achieve the pattern factor. So, this is controlled the aerodynamics is controlled in a such a manner. So, that the exit temperature profile exists exactly matches that of that is required by the or it is desired to match that of the that is required most conducive for the turbine. And uh, as you see about 60 percent of the total air is used in this one. So, of the uh, so a lot of air you see that there is aerodynamics in, in this combustors is very important because it leads to the cooling and control of pollutants and also for achieving the uh, particular um, pattern factor. So, this is the purpose of the uh, dilution zone. So, uh, in the next um, um, uh, in the next uh, uh, part of the class we will take up uh, how we basically inject fuel and what are the processes which basically breaks up the fuel into small droplets and um, uh, how uh, basically how to basically inject the fuel inside this combustor which is also a very important topic in gas turbine combustion. So, see you then.